Thank you for tuning in to Fat Black and Femme today. Hey, Jordan. Hey, sir. How you? How are you doing today? It's, it's snowing like crazy outside, but like the sun is also shining. So I'm not quite sure how to feel. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, like what do you want to do with your life? But you know, I'm getting there. It was a stressful week, uh, but we are here. Saturday, my favorite time of the week. My favorite time of the week is talking with you and creating content for our audience. My favorite time of the week, too. It's the yeah. fun. It's the fun. It, it's, the, it's the best part. Um, and today we have a fun topic. Well, fun, but you think about certain past things. Dramatizing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not always easy uh, to talk about. You know, some some stories are harder than others. Definitely. Um. But we're talking about dating while fat today. And um, it's, it's a touchy subject. You know, we asked for your stories. We got a couple in and we're going to share with those with you today um, mm-hmm. as well. You know, I'm not going to name names. We're just going to share the stories. But we're also going to share our own experiences because, you know, fat women dating, we do that. Um, and yeah, we're just going to get into it. So, you know. What was your experience? Like, when did you start dating, Jordan? Oh. Um, <laughs> okay, so, like, adult Jordan is, like, um, I was 24, like, right now. Um, because those other relationships were not it. <laughs> but realistically, I think I was, like, a teenager, um, 13, 14. Um, I dated the same, like guy in high school for like a really long time why I don't know but I did it um during but see my my stories are kind of unique because I was like a really big child Mm -hmm. and um so I guess you can't really consider that dating but it did frame how I chose to date in the future so like when I was little um I had a crush on a guy and um I remember, like, somebody outed me about it, and, like, then all the fat jokes came, and, like, you can't, like, you like her, you think she's cute, like, look at her, she's so big, like, Mm -hmm. and so I'm just like, oh, so I can't, I can't be assertive, like, you know, you can't be assertive, you have to wait to be pursued, because you're like, all right, I don't want to put myself in a situation to get teased or get bullied. So when I started to date, when I got older, I wasn't assertive Mm -hmm. or I, or I like welcomed unwanted attention because I didn't want to push it away, but I had lost a lot of weight in high school. So I was, I was skinny in high school because of, um, I got diagnosed and I got sick. Um, but when I start gaining that weight back, my body image changed. And so I started uh, going back into my shell. You know what I mean? Like going like back internally, like, oh, they're not going to like me. Like I'm not skinny anymore. Like, you know what I mean? And so like, I've had a really unhealthy like relationship with dating, like for real. Um, And I think it has a lot to do with how I saw myself in my body because I've had different men tell me, you just need to lose a little bit more weight. You just need to lose a, like 10, 20 pounds and you're, you'll be perfect. Because I have a shape. Everybody always talks about my shape. But like, oh, you just need to lose a little bit on the stomach. Got a fupa. You need to get rid of that. You know what I'm saying? Like people always critique. I always had men critiquing bits and pieces of my body. So, and women, like. Yeah. yeah no, that's but not- it would be, it, it was very difficult. It was difficult. And I think once I got older um, and I met the person I'm with now um, who has seen me through weight fluctuation, losing weight, gaining weight, et cetera, et cetera, you know that you're loved in all seasons and you don't think about it as much anymore. But it was a long time coming before I got there. Um, Yeah, dating wise, I actually didn't officially date until college. Okay literally like my sophomore year of college um but you know I dealt with a lot of the same things you know I had crushes growing up but it was always felt like it was always kind of the same thing where it felt like we would connect and then 
what their friends would say about me being fat would get That's in the way. exactly what it is like we had a great relationship until your friends found out yeah it's like i remember you know junior high literally this kid i remember being i feel like i might have told the story before <laughs> it really does stick with me but like uh, we were at an honor roll ceremony, and the girl was just asking him, "Why don't uh, why don't you date Brianna?" We're like seventh grade, right? And he's like, "You know, she was just cuter and a little skinnier." And I'm like, "Whoa!" Yes, and that sticks with me. It's like it will always stick with you because you know, in the back of your head. Yeah, it's, and it's the conversations that people. It's the things people say when you're not. They don't think you're listening. Yeah. Um. So, so what I was hearing was that I fit all the other criteria of whatever a seventh grade girlfriend could be or emotionally be but when it came to looks and everything it was a no-go for that right. um and that stuck with me throughout high school you know I definitely had a couple crushes where that felt like that too where it was just like okay if my body wasn't you know like I make you laugh we we talk you could be the home girl but you can't be the yeah. girlfriend and that's often the thing that black girls get cast as in yeah. shows movies it's fat girls you know we can be the best friend we can be the home girl we can be all of that but we can never truly be the love interest um do you do you know who nicole Byer is oh yeah that's my girl all right so have you watched her facebook show no so she has this facebook show and um it, it's relevant i promise <laughs> no, she's dating like consistently through the show like trying to find a boyfriend or whatever and i love it because like she's dating like these fine men who say nothing about her weight. Mm -hmm. And it's it was just, to able to date. just like to autonomously, date. like yeah. she's a fat girl, she's a fat black girl. She dated white men, black men, different different types of people. And then it's like, nope, like, it was never, you know, and how body positive she is. Um, the show is centered just around like literally sex and dating. And I thought it's like really groundbreaking. I wish more people watched it. Like it was on Facebook. I watched it a couple summers ago, but it was so groundbreaking for me because she, because you know, she felt like she carries herself so confidently. Um, it's like, and it's like, she does it on purpose. You know, she does the purposeful things to show that fat girls can do this. Like fat girls can be pole dancers. Fat girls can do this. Fat girls can wear 10 inch heels. Her pole dancing videos. She be killing it. Okay, That's seriously. Like it's getting there. Exactly. So like I really like enjoyed it. I um maybe we could link it in the bio or something so yeah. people could see. But um I think it was a really dope show and it just showed dating. Um, because you always see like these dating shows on TV with especially black ones, they're pretty people. Yeah. They are so pretty. They're pretty people and they're also like people, Fit. they're not fat. Fit pretty people. Yeah, I think I was I was reading something the other day. People were, or no, uh, in this Facebook group I'm in, this white girl, this bright big girl, and she said people were, you know how you can pass like skin tone wise, um, like as white even though you're mixed or whatever, whatever your you know genetic makeup is. I didn't get that. I did. I I missed that. Yeah. What the passing? That. Yeah. Oh, we'll have a whole show on that too. <laughs> I could, I couldn't, I couldn't pass if I tried. You know, I'm a black woman. Oh yeah, no, it's <laughs> listen. Um, but you know, she was saying there's people who are fat passing. Yes. You know who who claim the term fat or or are or the world puts fat on them, but in actuality they are coke bottle shaped and flat stomached and and no cellulite and no jiggle. They mm -hmm. just are thick. Yeah, they're just thick. Like Tegria Majors is, she's just thick. Yeah, Ashley Graham, they're just thick. Yeah, cause she she don't have no stomach. Yeah, no stomach, and it's um. I was there at one point too. Yeah, I was there at one point, and it was uh, it's hard, especially like like we're gonna have this conversation in the future about ed stats, but like especially with someone like me who weights goes up and down consistently. It's difficult because I don't know these women's past and you don't know what operations they have, may have or you don't know how they work to get where they are. Um, and you talk about how their bodies are flat in the stomach and they have these things. But honestly, they may have not always been like that. And just because you're a physical change, your body, like the body dysmorphia is real. Mm -hmm. So like they might not even know like you know I I was skinny and I really did not know that 
Mm-hmm. So, like, I just, I think about it. But I think it also, like, back to the dating idea about, like, body image, um, it, it sucks because those are the fat people that are acceptable. Mm-hmm. Like he'll date, like he'll date um Ashley Graham. Yeah, she's like an acceptable fact. Exactly, and when people, a lot of times when people say "oh BBW" or whatever, they mean don't get me started. Yeah, that's the term we gotta have a show on as well. So we will, because yeah. I have I could talk for hours about that. Yeah, and it's just you know, and that's and that's some of the battles we face just. You know, dating while fat is is one we're battling these faux images of when people think of fat, they think of these people. Yeah, it's like no, that's not realistic. That's not who everyone is. Um, I've always, always, literally, I've always been fat. Like mm-hmm. since a kid, like I've always shared had a bigger body. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know what it's like to go through life not big, not in this, uh, you know, not in this kind of circle that life has put me in right uh, that society puts me and i don't know how to live outside of that right now right but it's so it's so um linear like there's no like people act like there's no spectrum of factors or yeah. like you have to be in one category you're either ashley graham or you're rescue like there's no in between which is unrealistic because people have journeys that are all different like you either fit or your 600 pound life like you're not like there is no and like everybody is completely different and like dating and, and bringing that just i think we're getting a little sidetracked because <laughs> like it, it, it's it's but it all, it all goes into it i will say it does all impact how a possible significant other sees you um and you go through and and, and to be honest i realized something the other day I have never not dated on a dating app. Ever. Ooh. I have ever had sex with every person I have ever been in a relationship with. I met through a dating app. Wow. I have never picked up a guy or had someone approach me in public and in a relationship or some or whatever, a situation, anything blossom. No. You know? No. I, have, no. I had to think about it. And it's just like, and I, and I, I have to think like, okay, what would I have done 20 years ago when these things weren't a thing? Mm-hmm. But literally, like, is that me not putting myself out there enough because of insecurities? Because of like, I'm not about to get, you know, embarrassed. In right. Like, with dating apps, at the very least, I could send a text message and ask like, all right, why did you swipe right on me? Why do you like big women? Because if it's some crap, like, you know, they're the best people to have sex with, I'm blocking you. Right. And, like, if it's just, like, you know what, that's just who I've always been attracted to, cool. That's where, and we can keep, right. you know, you can't gauge that in public or in person. You kind of have to talk to someone first and then be, and then you have to wait for that bomb to drop, whether right. it's, you know, a good one or a bad one. Um and I've never had that experience. I don't really want it. I don't really need it. Um, but it's just recognizing that. And just, and that's what I'm saying. I don't need it. I mean, it's the idea of like, I've never gone to a bar. I've had a guy buy drinks for me, but I've never like, I let him buy me drinks because I was thirsty. And then I ignored him. Like nothing else ever came from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never had that kind of thing happen. Uh, so like dating has been very it's virtual for me yeah it starts off there do you um, think it's different like do you think that you navigate these dating um, sites or these dating apps differently than like the regular like not a fat girl just like a stereotypical girl who mm-hmm. just you know that everybody swipes left well right I don't know which way it is the right way the good way oh <laughs> Yeah. What I think I do is like, yeah, I navigate it and I'm very open on the app. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I refuse to be that. F- I, I I know there's, there's things. It's just, I've seen too many catfish episodes. Where the catfish is a fat person who was just insecure and, you know, and hid behind a skinny body in a skinny picture. And I, I, and it bothers me a lot because I'm always like, you're so beautiful. 
Yeah. You didn't need to do that. Like, I'd be so mad because I'm like, no, because now he don't like you because you a catfish. Yeah, but it's like, the thing is, it's like, if they weren't a catfish, they would have never swiped right on them. They would have never talked to them. And, and, and it's so sad. Yeah, and that's why it's like, doing the catfish gets you nowhere because you still end up alone. Right. The person doesn't want to date a liar now because not only are you there in their negative column, you know, they, they put fat in their negative column. Right. Now they because, also and because they yeah. may not be attracted to fat people and they also you done lied and now you done catfish them. Exactly. So it, it just it it's like okay, not only am I not we're actually physically attracted to you, but even if they and, and I think that's also almost not giving people a chance to, but right. it, like we're so scared of being hurt because we have been yeah. hurt time and time and time again. Yeah. you know they put this wall up they put this who they want to be up and I think the person they can show people because that's yeah. that's going to get them you know at the end of the day less pain right and I think that um with me dating I definitely um have stopped myself with like approaching or pursuing someone because of my body type and because of the people that I've seen them with in the past yeah and I think that it does shape like who you pursue and who you even talk to who you even try to base the connection with like I remember actually a couple maybe like a year or two ago I was hanging out with a friend of mine and we're good friends like we do not like we never slept together never it was a platonic friendship but we would always go out together um to the bar and everything and he did that anonymous thing and somebody was like that that light skin bigger you be with is not it and I remember that and I commented I said first of all I am it because every time we are out I do get pursued by somebody else even with I'm with men so Somebody like me. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you knew exactly who she was, who that she, I'm going to say she, because I am i don't know, who that person was talking about. Mm-hmm. And it like made me feel bad. And I literally stopped hanging out with my friend because of that post. Like, and I did it subconsciously. And I feel like I really didn't. And I could say it was dating, but it wasn't. It, it Technically, it was. So I'm going out with another sex that I am attracted to, but we're not like pursuing anything. We're just having fun and seeing each other and hanging out. But like, I literally, like, I used to be with him every weekend. We used to go out every weekend, go to the bar, get drinks, get food, whatever. I stopped hanging out with him. And he stopped hanging out with me too. He didn't ask me why. But it goes back to that same thing about it, like when we were kids. Once your friends start, saying stuff Mm -hmm. they're like oh maybe i need this not a good look for me yeah so i mean i definitely it's hard you thought you think about yourself you overthink it way too much they ain't supposed to be fun and you know what with that situation it also is just like it goes back to that person allowing i mean you also allowed it other people to influence that relationship. I definitely um, did. And I think that's the biggest thing is dating while fat is that, you know, society is going to play a huge role in who you talk to, right. and who talks to you. Um, Cause there's probably plenty, there are so many guys who fetishize big women, fat women who will have sex with them, who will lust after them and will never actually date them. Yep. And you know, that plays into it because they're like, we're not worthy of more. We're not worthy of that. We're only, you know, there for objects, some- sexual objects. We're sexual objects and nothing more than that. Yeah. Um, even if the person is like the physical attraction is there, everything is there. Society is telling you to do something else, to date something else, to love someone else. Um, and that's constantly breaking into your mind your death significant other mm-hmm. to be honest like, like my current partner is six five and skinny but like generally when i would date i would look for fat people specifically fat femmes like i don't you know and i was non-monogamous we were non-monogamous for a while and i would only 
look for fat fountains. Like that's all I wanted. That's all. And it's not because I didn't think I could get other people. I could, I did, but it was more so like, I felt more comfortable with them. Cause I knew they should do a double date. Yeah. What'd you say? We should double date. Let's do it. Once COVID ain't a thing. Right, bring the dogs too. Oh, no, my dog bad. My dog's a sweetie. Don't listen. We need some sweetie. I um, think he has ADHD. Well, I think all dogs do. <laughs> like that, remember, like up uh, squirrel, like he really act like that. Like oh, I'm just, hey, you weird, you're a weird dog. But <laughs> but yeah, uh, what are some stories that you've heard? Oh, so me? it, you know what? It's crazy. You know what people go through in dating, and a lot of it comes from that set. Like I said, we're only able to be a certain thing to certain yeah. people. Um, people don't want to see us as any more than that. And, you know, a big thing is when they see you as just a sexual object, they also, we're also seen as easy. Yeah. We're also seen as attainable. So that's why often people set their eyes on us because they're like, oh, I can definitely get my sub door or, you know, I can definitely get in her pants or their pants, um, get in their pants because they're fat no one else wants them right these are the legit thoughts that go through people's heads before they message us yeah so when we by some grace of god <laughs> allow ourselves not to talk to you uh, we we hold ourselves back from having sex with this magic this magical beast um you get upset and that's what happened to someone who you know sent in uh <clears throat> You know, one of the stories they were talking about how they were supposed to meet up with him, and some stuff came up. Like that came up. They got sick. They also had some other things to do. So they said, "You know, I can't meet up tonight, but we can meet up." Like they weren't trying to just blow them off, right? And his response in the end uh, was, "Don't be a fat prude." Yeah. And uh, when she laughed, he said, "You're a fat weirdo." And it's like, it's always just funny how fat is the reason why you message me, and now it's what you're insulting me with. It's like you were holding that. You got an arsenal full of insults. Um, to manipulate to and to control. Exactly. And to throw at me as you please. Yep. When you don't feel like you're getting your way, and you feel like like, how, how do you think insulting me in your mind, insulting me, is going to get me to open my legs? Right. Some people that work for, some people like to be degraded. Some people like to be put down that way. Okay. But don't come in my inbox. Mm -hmm. they, that's how you got to get something. Right. Okay. And it's just, I think the biggest thing people do is just, they think because we're big, we're easy. Mm -hmm. and then we'll give whatever like I said because no one else wants us that's yeah. how they think and and what's sad is when you're dating that's that gets in your head that got into my head like mm -hmm. I said I didn't date until like at an actual partner until I was 19 I didn't have sex until I had sex before I had an actual partner um but that was only maybe a year before so like 18 um and you know it wasn't for the lack of i think people around or you know me finding people attractive but it was being 17 being fat mm -hmm. being in a place where it's like you compare you also your confidence is not 100 percent because that's also a big thing is like when they see Oh, not only is she fat, but she's not one of those confident fats, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so she isn't, she is like, oh, you, you know, she's down on herself. And it's like, I wasn't necessarily down on myself, but I definitely could have been more confident. But right. seeing that, you know, it's not that there weren't options. It's more so like people really paid attention to what other people thought and what other people cared about. Definitely. I think it plays a huge thing into us finding partners, us looking for partners, and us feeling comfortable seeking partners out. And it's, I just wish people would realize, you know, hurling those insults afterwards, it honestly makes you look so dumb. Yeah. 
because you were the person that reached out to this quote unquote fat whale. Mm. The person that tried to get in my pants. Okay. Like how low do you yeah. yourself that if you think of me that way and you still want to have sex with me, you know, and it's just, it makes no sense, you know, and, and going through dating now, you know, I had a non-monogamous bout. Like I said, I literally only dated femmes during that time. And a majority of them were fat. Mm -hmm. All of them were black. I'm a big, I don't, I don't, I like black people, period. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, <laughs> I basically said, I'll, I'll date any race, but white. I'm going to just think they're black. I, I say any race partly because you never know. You truly never know. No. Black. But identification is important. I totally agree. Black is like 99.88899999% what I want. Completely. It's just more so like, I'll be open if God threw, you know, this uh, a nice Indian man in front of me. You know, I'd be open. I would not. I, but you know what? I think I put my foot down. And that's another thing. As fat femmes, I, I, as a fat woman, I also, that was also a part of it, sticking with black men. Mm. Because I felt black men were more accustomed to fat women. Yeah. Um, I felt black men were, you know, that's almost a part of our culture. The, so like, our, our big mothers, our, our grandmothers, like, this is a thing. Like, this is really a thing in our culture where, mm. you know, our families are just bigger. Yeah, and so I definitely stuck towards black men partly because of that as well. Um, even though you know there are there are black men who will say those weird things as well, you know if they don't escape that. Uh, but I definitely felt like because with white men, it wasn't just my fatness; it was also my blackness being fat. Right. You know, so there's also another level to it. So I'm like, at least I can avoid that part. You know, like, yeah, your, your fatness still gets fetishized with black men, no doubt, with any man. Like, there are plenty of men in every race that, that probably do this. Definitely. But at least I could avoid the racism. Right. I think um, just an observation I made in college. So I had um, white roommates. Um, and one of them was, huh? I hated my first college roommate. I did too. And they was black. But um they, uh, they ain't it, sure. Uh so <laughs> memories. I just came back. But no. So I had a white roommate and she was I wanna say stereotypical snow bunny. Mm -hmm. Like thick uh, then grits, no stomach. Mm -hmm. Like when I say, like, if she was, if she had, if she was black, like what? At her all the time, like for real. But because she was white, white men made her feel fat. Yeah. Um, they did not pursue her. She only dated men of color. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a very interest. It was very interesting to watch because at first I'm like, I get it, like I get why. Um, to white men, she's fat. To black dudes, she thick. Like, yeah. Um, and I mean, like Ashley, like Ashley Grand body, like no stomach, big thighs, big butt, like you know. And I remember, but the weird thing about it, so she used to get treated so crappy by these men and like oddly she was like okay with it and like she would she would tell me the stories of how like she'd be doing oral things and having I don't know why she was sharing all this information with me but she was uh <laughs> that she just just needed somebody to talk to but um and she would talk about how they would treat her, how she, like, the stories were literally like she was, like, a sneaky link, side piece, hidden gem. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, why are you okay with this? Like, she would be laughing about it and stuff like that. But I think, I really, really, really think 
it all contributed. It all attributed to the fact that she thought she genuinely believed she was fat, mm-hmm. and those are the only way she could be uh, wanting. Yeah, and that's what I think. Like you said, like white men, white people. Um, wait a second, because he growling at me. What's <laughs> so wrong? Oh, say hi. So little. Um, yeah, he's a baby. But uh, literally, I think it's because she grew up in with white people. And white people's bodies, you know, have a certain expectation. And they're not expected to look like ours. Right. Ours are naturally bigger. Um, they're also, you know, there are um, white people have that certain part of society on lock, the skinniness. That's, that's what they're expecting from them. So she grew up being told she was fat. Mm-hmm. Grew up being told she was probably the worst things imaginable, and she'd be lucky if anyone wanted her. Yeah, I you, that was her experience going through life as a white fat girl. You know, it is what it is. That just that's a that's probably what she went through. So she went towards the guys who actually paid her attention, which were black men, and you know she took the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. You know, but also, you know, the, up, like... talking, even spinning this though, you know, away from her and talking about the black men who want black features on a white woman. Mm. And that's also a big thing for girls like us, people like us who want to date within the race. I want a black mm-hmm. man. I want a black woman. I want a black person. I want a black, you know, non binary, per- black anything, mm-hmm. <laughs> anyone is for me black being yes a black being please um and for people like us who want to date other black people or particularly we're let's say black men because i think this is a particularly black male issue black cisgender male issue in wanting these black features who want kim kardashians who want white women with yeah. Big lips, big they want everything that a black girl has except her blackness. Exactly. They they don't want the actual blackness. They don't want the attitude or the sass or the ghetto ness that comes with being a black woman. And you know, and I think that's a big thing also because like we want to date black men, but they don't want us. Yeah. They don't want us. They want they want all of us except for the skin color. They want everything else. So right. also looking for that is like it's such a cash 22 that it's like i want black men because they're used to fat women but also there are so many black men who would rather go to a fat white woman than a fat black woman because they're more submissive or they don't give them attitude they don't nag them they don't do this do this or that um and it's just it's just a tale that i don't think and it's then we always stir the pot they say we stir the pot when we say stuff like that but it's not just us it's making experience. a generalization like we've seen it i think it's experience it's yeah like, it really is like experience and i especially in oh go ahead what you say oh especially in college like you had to went to brockport <laughs> uh yeah no but <laughs> Ew, ew. But anyway, <laughs> um, you had to really sit there like he like black girls. Yeah, do he like black girls. It's and funny. then, but with us, do he like black girls? Do he like fat girls? Mm-hmm. You gotta ask both. He's like, do he like black black girls? <laughs> like, yeah. or he always like, do he like white girls? Do he only like light skin girls? Oh, I can't deal with that. You have it's so many layers, especially dating black men. It's like. You gotta like, you gotta like scope before you even approach. Like, especially when they're in that kind of environment, because a lot of black men come to white school. Come to white college to date white women. That is their goal. That is what they want when they get there. Uh-huh. They want the <laughs> I remember there was this, I, and it's funny because this man I used to date his brother. And I never seen him with a black girl, not one time, never in my life. And my cousin, uh, who is a dark skinned femme, 
Mm-hmm. How are you talking to him? They went on a date and everything. And I was, and you know, you know me, I'm over here like. This don't match. Right. Because I, ne- I had never, and when I tell you, I've known him for a long time. He went to Brockport as well. Mm-hmm. He was a basketball player. Those right. are the ones too. The athletes, I never, let me not. I never saw any of the athletes with uh, the athletes, wrestling. I was pursued by a couple. Mm-hmm. I was pursued by a couple, but I don't think I saw. It was few and wide in between. Like it, I was, it, I talked to a couple, but like that wasn't normal for them to talk to. And then they always hit me with the, what are you mixed with? And I'd be like, black and magic. Uh, like um i'm yellow i'm yellow i'm just like i'm, not mixed. <laughs> I'm yellow <laughs> but it goes from like you like i remember and i remember sitting down like asking my mom like should i tell her <laughs> like i don't want to seem like a hater you know what i'm saying like i don't want to be like he don't really like black girls like i don't want to tell her that because what if she like him like what if they do have a connection and I'm just making a preconceived notion? I think in that situation, it's like you, I don't blame you for saying like, hey, just know he got a track record. I've known him for quite some time and you are the first black person I've ever seen him with. I didn't tell her um, because I just didn't think she was going to take it well. Um, and I didn't want to be, I, I, it's not my business, whatever. Um, and I had, <laughs> it's funny. So they dated, they dated. And then all of a sudden you see on Facebook, he done married and had a baby with a white girl. Surprise. And I was like, I should have said something. <laughs> I should have said something. But like, she doesn't, I didn't, she's not fat at all. She's skinny. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just interesting to see the different layers that we have to deal with. But like every time, I mean, for black women, it's hard to date, period. It's just hard to date as a woman, especially in cisgender relationships because of the high, high rates of domestic violence domestic in all in all relationships. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't we're also just not seen as beautiful. Attractive. We're not. To to a lot of people, Black women are seen as the bottom of the barrel. Literally just because of the hue to skin. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you are the... All the connotations that are attached to us, the angry Black women tropes, the the attitude, the sass, the the things that come with... The masculation. Yes, yes. Them making it... Like, listen, the crap that we used to see about Michelle Obama, about how she looks like a man, literally, like, there's so many black women that go through that. And this, okay. first of all, it's also transphobic. Just okay. for all y'all out there, if you indulge in that kind of stuff, if you even laugh at it, it's mad transphobic. It's disgusting. You see what they did with Sierra? Yeah. Way back when, yeah. when they tried to follow the rumor that she was a hermaphrodite. You see how they demonized Meg Stallion because she's tall. Yes. Because she's tall and, and isn't like a, a stick. Right, so, and it's just like Megan, I heard. I heard Megan and Zendaya are the same height. Mm-hmm. Wait, Janae. Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah, I thought you said Zendaya. Janae. I said, no, she's short. Yeah, she's <laughs> Zendaya. Yeah, yeah. but Zendaya yeah. is and Zendaya is thin, yeah. so she doesn't fit yeah. those those labels and those kind of looks. Um, and there's a lot of layers like that doesn't just affect super fats like bigger fats like me but also skinnier black women like we yeah. do it. that's why I always like this show I, I, a thing for us here has always been what boxes do you check mm-hmm. we check a lot of boxes we're queer we're fat we're black and we're women right okay so that's four different categories that we're hit with on a daily basis uh, of things that can be used against us and, and to hurt us and that do hurt us on a daily basis. College, even the fact that we college educated. Yeah. You know, like and- there are so many different things that are stacked against, that that are supposed to be like the highlights of us that people use to demonize us and to make us unattract, like to deem us unattractive or unable to commit. Because I feel like there's a lot of black women are like the most educated 
group in America right now. But a lot of times when we go back home, we're seen as bougie. We're seen as uppity. Um, I know that was definitely a thing when I went back home. And it felt like I just didn't belong anymore because, you know, I had been shown new things, new ways to do things. New oh, ways. I've been called bougie my whole life. You know what? I, I never was that. I, I never was that. I was, I'm not, you know, I, and, and you are bougie, but you're not bougie because of that because you're educated like you've always like that's just you period you know and it's just like, I like nice things so. <laughs> <laughs> i like nice things i have traveled the world like and that's fine and, and it's, it's weird that because you like nice things or because you know you find different ways to go about things or or you put a therapy or or things like that you're called bougie um but we also have to talk about that. We have to talk about how they treat black women as if they can't want finer things. Yeah. And like, it goes back to us being fat too. Like when you were saying how, yeah, how we supposed to just take it. We just supposed to take it because we're fat and black and nobody's gonna like us. So we're just supposed to take you cause you have a penis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you have the, the barest of minimums of qualifications you think you know I know sir. put you on a pedestal um and it's just it doesn't work that way and and honestly I don't even think I'm real I'm bougie when it comes to like materialistic stuff you know what I mean like I love to travel yeah. I've been to like different continents I've been out the country like I love cruising you know I like shopping and buying nice things you know like things like that but when it comes to a relationship I feel like I'm very practical mm -hmm. like as far as I really would like okay so why can't I expect from you what I have yeah, you want so, on a certain level, and you want that person to also be on a certain level, rather than why are black women the only group of people that are expected to date lower? Yep. If I I, I own my house, okay. So where do you live? I live with my mama. Mm -mm. Sorry, I'm just not interested. You're not on my level there are merits to both sides and I'm glad this was brought up too because I think it also is definitely an important topic when with this within this is I don't think there's an issue with holding someone down me neither if that's what you want to do I have definitely done it yeah I honestly my current relationship there are ups and downs with employment with money with everything you know and I'm fine where I am I love them we are where we are and but you have to but but it's the importance of being fulfilled in the right places so it's like it's fine if you choose to be there yeah it's also very much okay to realize that's not what you want to do that's not mm. who you're willing to step down for as a partner um you got to think about the work you're willing to do in a relationship definitely and if you're like you know what the work that's going to be done in this relationship is too much for me okay yes that's My it last relationship was definitely like that yeah if you, and if he you, was, I, I literally look back now and I'm like, he was literally a parasite. Mm -hmm. Sucking from you. And it's like, I lost so much weight and I'm like, oh, I look cute. No, you're stressed. <laughs> like, no, no, you're stressed out. <laughs> Eat. And, there's a, and there's also, it's like the fat phobia that's <laughs> in us is like, it don't matter how you lose the weight, but if you do it, you look good. And it's like, nah, like if you are so stressed by your partner that, you aren't eating. That's you know I lost 20 pounds over this Christmas break because I was sick. Listen, but you're going to have people say, oh, you look good. It's like, no, I'm dealing with a chronic. I illness. did that to myself. I was like, ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I stepped on the scale like, ooh, a, a pro. And yeah. I'm like, no, you were sick. You were stressed. You were struggling. That's not a healthy loss of weight. It's not right. like you're in the gym every day and, and trying to eat better. And, you know, like, oh, the natural weight loss that comes with sometimes, you know, doing those habits. It was, no, you were battling a chronic illness. And, and I feel like it's so hard, <laughs> especially, but another aspect of dating while fat, while we're talking about weight loss, is that yeah. weight fluctuation and weight loss. Mm -hmm. So say, I know I was in a relationship where I started gaining weight 
and he commented on it a lot. Mm. And he was this tall, little scrawny little thing. And he made me feel so small because of it. Like, I'm not trying to gain weight. Like, you understand my illness. You like, but it's not even only my illness. Before I was diagnosed with lupus, I was fat. My brain has always been fat body. Like, that's how my, like, I was little, three, four, five, six. Like, I didn't start getting skinny until I was maybe 13. So, like, your mindset is always there because that's how you grew up. Yeah. Like, as a little kid, I was always the biggest one. And, like, when people comment on it consistently, it does so much to you, especially to the person from the person that's supposed to keep you safe. Yeah. Make you feel safe and make you feel protected and make you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Somebody telling you about your body and not uplifting you. Mm -hmm. It is such a hard thing to do. I know after that relationship, it took me a very long time to even want to date again. Because I never wanted to be in that situation. I'm like, okay, I gotta lose weight before I date. I gotta lose the weight before I date because I don't ever want somebody to tell me, oh, I'm too big for this, that, and the third. Yeah. I think it's also, like, you have that that space of, like, you can be either or. Like, you yeah. might get Jordan who's skinny, you might get Jordan who's a little thicker. Um, and, and, you know, my battle is, like, I'm I ain't never gonna be skinny again. Period. You know, and it, it, that's your body. Like, it, you, I'm all right. It's that you're healthy. <laughs> That's what's important, especially like your body battles so much on a daily basis. If you're healthy, that's all you need, and that's all you should be asking for. I need the extra um, to help me out a little bit. Listen, and that's some real stuff, and that's why, it, like the judging on weight, you don't know what somebody's going through. It's just hard though to date. Yeah, because dating, okay, friends. Yeah, like you know, you can create a friendship. It's easy. Like fat girls are always the friend. But once it becomes, you know, intimate interest or sexual interest, you you start thinking about all the things that that person could comment on. Mm -hmm. And when we do the when we do the sex while fat, oh lord, I hope my mama ain't listening to that when we do it. But but um, but when we have that conversation, like I know, like there, I have marks on my body from my illness, but also like you, you rub your thighs, rub together, you know what I'm saying? Things like that, little fupa. You think about your body part. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I always dated fat people. Aside yeah, from my mind, because it's like, I don't have to explain the dark circles on my inner thighs because I'm rubbing together. I don't have to explain stretch marks. I don't have to explain this, but even my current partner looks at that and doesn't see imperfections. That's beautiful. You know, he doesn't see imperfections. And I, I don't want a partner that ever does see those as something wrong with me. Yeah. Like, no, those are a part of, even if I lost weight, those things are never going anywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what, I'll always have stretch marks. I'll always have those dark circles. I'll always have, you know, something to remind you that I'm fat, period. That's who you're dating and that's what you're dating. And, you know, I, I, there is a disconnect from dating a skinnier partner. Um, sometimes they don't understand the certain insecurities you have or, or the certain notions. Like sometimes I just need to vent. Sometimes I just need and to My boyfriend is skinny too. Listen, it, it, sometimes you, I just need to vent. I don't need, you know, like he's there for no matter what my decision is in my body and my health and whatever, whichever way I go. If I stay right now, he's cool. If I lose weight, he's cool. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a supportive no matter what. But, like, when you're insecure, I don't want to hear, you know, we can go to the gym. I don't, wanna, I don't even want to hear that. I want to hear, like, it, and it's not being said in a way, like, you should go to the gym. It's more so trying to... Trying to help. Trying to fix the problem that he... Yeah, like we were talking about last episode. People try to fix the problem without trying to actually just hear you out. Exactly. And it's like, he's trying to fix the problem that I just presented him with. He's trying to give me a solution. Right. And, and sometimes it's like, and, and other fat people realize it's like, no, I don't, I'm not saying I need to fix it. I'm saying that, you know, some days are harder than others. And there are certain things that will help. And sometimes venting is one of them. Sometimes screaming is one of them. And I just want you there for that. I don't, I don't need a solution because the solutions 
it's kind of like it, it, it annoys me because it's only we all know the solutions you know this isn't this isn't rocket science whichever way you want it to go we know the solutions so it's just like when you have your facebook doctors who are like i just want you to be healthy you know it's like get the fuck out of here right no one no one's asking for that no right. one's asking to be a physician or a doctor to give me medical advice at this point it's just like mind your business let me talk mind your business whatever i decide is best for me is whatever was best for me Period. and that's it Period. And it's just like, that's all I'm asking for. And I think that's a battle in dating because, you know, if you don't wind up with a fat partner, I think there's always going to be that disconnect of someone if they were never fat. Just, yeah. just you know, it is what it is. That's, that's, there's a small disconnect. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and people will definitely feel it'll be figured out as you go along and maybe they've never dated a fat partner before or a comfortably fat partner. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause there's also fat partners who aren't comfortable and who are like, I need to every other day trying to fat diet. And exactly. just, you know what I'm saying? So maybe they needed that kind of encouragement, but I'm different from that. Like, I don't need that. I need something else. And that's also just being communicative with your partner. If something happens, um, right. But it's, it's a whole journey in dating and it's exhausting. <laughs> Do you have any like tips for people uh, dating while fat? If they're fat, if they're not fat, dating a fat person, what do you think? If you're dating, if you are not fat and you're dating a fat person, I think take from our previous, what we were just, just talking about and, and don't try to find a solution. We don't need a solution. We know what the solutions are. They're, you know what I'm saying? We've been taught them all our lives. Um, but even our solution, the end result, we may not be wanting to be skinny. We want right. to be comfortable. We want to be comfortable. And you know what's going to make us comfortable? The world changing. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, we want clothes that are cute that fit us. It happens sometimes. But it's so hard to find. They're far and few between that are also actually cute. Right. We, want, we want people to not look at us strange when we go out. Because best believe, when I leave the house, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel good, especially when I've done my makeup. I, I got a cute outfit on. Then I go to the mall, and I'm about to pass a group of men, and I feel insecure. Because I know, you know, or if I'm walking down the street in, you know, a neighborhood, and I pass a group of men. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or even just, like, the wrong person looks at you a different way. You know, that's what needs to change in order to make me feel comfortable. But it won't. Right. So you do what you can to help me find comfort because that's really what i need i'm not asking for a solution and then if you're a fat person who's dating you know i think something i always want to reiterate on this show we don't have things figured out mm -hmm. we basically go off of what we've been through um and try to propose solutions for that because that's all we know we know what worked for us and what could work in the future and and how we would handle things and we like to talk. <laughs> that's that's what this is. And uh, you know, dating while fat. You know, one. I think we could do better at just putting ourselves out there. I know we're scared. I know we're, you know, worried that no one's going to accept us for who we are and how big we are. And you know, one thing I've learned is that there are so many people out here who find you beautiful, mm -hmm. find you attractive, who will look at you on. And what I I was about to say look on the inside, but it's like, you don't have to, like, yes, your inside should also be beautiful, but that's not where people have to always go for beauty. As in like, there are people who also find your outside beautiful. Like I'm just because you're fat doesn't mean you have to go personality first. Okay. Exactly. It's also beautiful. You can find, exactly. And it's like, not that people who will find you beautiful on the inside, but both right. who will find you beautiful on outside and inside. There are so many people um and open yourself up maybe you're not opening yourself up to certain people because you also have those thoughts that's definitely a big thing is we have our own internalized fat phobia racism homophobia they're all in uh, we have a lot of internalized things that we have to break down right maybe that's stopping you from dating someone because you've never dated a fat man fat woman fat person um and that stopped you from maybe pursuing someone even though they're really awesome and sweet yeah. Um, so just open yourself up more be upfront and open yourself up more um 
because I think that's one thing I don't like I said I don't need the experience where I have a bunch of people coming up to me I don't like talking to people uh I don't like talking to strangers <laughs> so it's like that's cool but it's like I do think opening yourself up more could open a lot of doors you know do you have agree. Jordan I mean if just don't settle like Mm-hmm. If that's not what you want, keep keep being open for what you want. Like, there is no need to settle just because this one person is doting over you. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't like that person, that's fine. That don't feel guilty about it. Like, just don't feel like but, you need to like them because they like you. Exactly. And I think that's stupid. So. <laughs> so be yourself like don't hide yourself um somebody will love you like your face pretty your soul pretty period like you have to you have amazing qualities that are in your fat body your fat body is a part of you you're already there you are you have arrived so show that person your full self and if they can't accept that kick them to the curb it's over. Period. Period. Yeah. I think that was uh today was definitely a fun day. Dating while fat. It's and you know, we're still it's always tough because you always there's always so many different lanes to go down with certain topics. And I think dating while fat is definitely something we'll revisit again. Um, just because it's it's real. It's so real. Uh the, the trauma and the things that we go through. Uh, dating and not being what society exactly wants out of a woman, out of a person. Um, so it's definitely something I think we'll revisit again. Today was great. And like I said, we will always, you know, try to be there for, for you guys, share your stories. You know, um, I hope today you found some kind of comfort in people knowing how you feel um, and understanding your journey, you know, while trying to find somebody or people, period, you know, Um yeah but thank you for tuning in uh one thing is a week from today or this weekend i don't know it's 31 days in january right don't ask me no question i'm dead no a week in a couple days uh blackout magazine will be putting out their february issue be sure to read it follow them on like them on facebook and while you're on facebook like us as well fat black and femme we also just started new social media pages on instagram twitter we got our youtube whole whole thing whole five black and femme uh you know enterprise yes okay uh so whichever app you frequent more all of them if you want please go give us a like a follow um and subscribe and uh we hope to keep bringing you content every week um and it was a great day today next week what are we talking about next week jordan it's February 6th, so, you know, we'll be talking about- I forgot that fast. I know, I had to open up my notebook. We'll be talking about some change makers in Rochester, some yeah. black fans that have, like, led the way in, you know, changing things, how things are done here in Rochester, and, and how people perceive them, as well as other community members. And stick with us, because also, on Valentine's Day weekend, we're bringing you dating sex. Sex while fat. We're bringing y'all sex while fat. Ooh, Which I, I really hope my mama don't listen. Listen, sex while fat is going to be a fun conversation. It's going to be funny. <laughs> listen, it's one thing I know how to talk about is sex, but uh, that's our business. Let's talk about sex. Mm-hmm. So be sure to look out for those episodes in the next coming weeks and to subscribe, like, and comment, and follow, and share, and all that beautiful stuff. And we'll see you back next Saturday. Bye. Bye.